The Float with Henry Morgan. Through illness, Jeffrey is unable to rescue Kitty before Dolores and Diaz take her by force to Cuba. Upon reaching Port Royal, he discovers that Captain Morgan has sailed. Realizing the only person who can help him is the governor, Sir Thomas Motford, he risks his liberty by going to him. He manages to convince Sir Thomas and Colonel Atterbury as to what really happened on the night the necklet was taken. And Sir Thomas, realizing that Dolores will tell the Spaniards of Morgan's plans, apprehends Morgan's danger. Geoffrey tells of how in England the man Glegg deputed him and left him innocently in the possession of stolen jewels. Although innocent, he was convicted and sent as a convict to Jamaica. Sir Thomas asked him how it was that he was free in Port Royal to join Henry Morgan. How is it, Hunter, that you were sent out here as a convict and yet you were free to join Henry Morgan? I realize that joining the buccaneers is an ideal way for a man to escape, but the risk is great. Captain Morgan is frequently in Port Royal. The chances of recognition are many, and uh, a convict or a slave is always a marked man. I was free because I didn't reach these shores as a convict. Do you know, Colonel, what happened to the convict ship which left England before you? Oh, that must have been the ship that was lost at sea and lost all hands. Lost all hands, except one. I was aboard that ship. We were just off the Jamaican coast when we were struck by a terrible storm. I have never known such wind or been conscious of such seas. We were all shut up, locked down in the hold. We could only imagine what was going on outside. Suddenly all hell was let loose. Above the wind was a roar and then a crash. We in the darkness surmised the mast had gone. We felt the ship list badly. Men in the hold screamed and scrambled trying to find a way out of the darkness. Water started to come in. We knew the ship was doomed, confusion reigned, and above our heads the storm raged and roared and the battered ship was tossed about. Men became like hysterical animals. But surely, surely the ship was not abandoned and, uh, and you men left to your own fate? No, not quite that. When they realized the ship was doomed, they flung open the hatches. The seas came tumbling down. Two or three members of the crew struggled in the hold to unchain the convicts, but they left it too late. Only a few of us were unchained. Then the water started coming like a torrent. The ship was turning over. Three others and myself managed to scramble out of above, and the ship sank beneath our very feet. The cries of the men were drowned in the morning of the wind, and then shut off suddenly. What happened to you? I was sucked down to the churning, angry greenness, down, down, till I thought my lungs would break. Then suddenly the suction stopped, and I shot like a cork from a bottle up to the surface. Two of us. Only two of us were struggling in the sea. A broken spar floated by. We both grabbed it. Two days and two nights I hung to that spar, and on the second night my companion loosened his hold. That was that. The next morning I was washed up on a rocky shore. On the coast of Jamaica. Yes, I know the very spot. Quite a bit of wreckage is washed up there. I didn't wait to see. I had arrived in Jamaica, not in chains as I had thought, but with a chance of being free. There was no one in Jamaica who knew me. I had guessed that I possibly was the only man to come out of that wreck alive. I believed if I laid low long enough and existed quietly, there was a very good chance that no one would ever know anything about me. It was while I was living in seclusion that I met Captain Morgan one night. He offered me a berth aboard his ship. He didn't know who I was, and I refused to say anything about myself. I believed I had a chance to get away with him, and during his cruises, I would become accepted as a member of his crew, and no questions would ever be asked about myself. But fate decided that someone should come out on the very next voyage. Someone who knew you. Yes, Clegg. The man who duped me. I knew it was no good appealing to him to tell the truth. He isn't the type who would enjoy seeing a convict go free, no matter how innocent he was. About this man, Glegg. You have told me that you gave him a position in your house in England. Yes, I was sorry for him. He told me such a sad tale. Well, it seems to me that you were convicted on very small evidence, if, if what you say is true. Glegg told me that he was a reformed character. While he was with me, he seemed grateful to the position I had given to him. Unknown to me, he was going out at night robbing, and in doing so he showed great cunning, because he only robbed wealthy friends of mine. Then, when he had taken all he could get from them, he cleared out. But he wanted to make sure that someone else was accused of his crime, so he left a few trinkets in my room, trinkets which could easily be traced. All my friends believed I had been robbing them. The authorities tried to persuade me to tell them where I'd hidden the rest of the loot, but of course I couldn't tell them. 
That made everything go against me. Glegg had disappeared. I could only talk about a man whom I couldn't produce. I was found with the jewels, and on that I was convicted. But I am as innocent of any crimes as you are, Sir Thomas, or you, Colonel. Oh. Here, we've been talking so long I've forgotten about tending to my friend here. Well, it's lucky he has a thick skull or the ball from my pistol might have killed him. You just grazed his temple. Oh, master, me got awful head. Now, don't you worry about anything here, oh, you. You just lie there still and you'll be all right. Now, uh, tell me about this Negro. Where does he come into your story? It was he who helped me escape from the swamp. Oh, so he's a runaway slave. I want you to understand, Sir Thomas, that Hero came with me voluntary. He has thrown away any chance he might have had of freedom so that we can help Captain Morgan. But for his care and attention, I would never have been here to tell you the truth. I would have died back there in the swamps. Hero, at every risk to himself, stayed by me and nursed me back to health. He has made a great sacrifice. Now I know it's all in vain. We have to go back to face whatever punishment there is for convicts or slaves who escape from the swamp. But you must do whatever you can to save Captain Morgan from sailing into a trap. If he and his men are saved, then whatever sacrifice Hero and I might make, it will not be in vain. Hmm. Colonel, will you pull back the curtains? It's light now. Good heavens, have we been talking as long as this? <sighs> Another day. I wonder what it will bring. Now, about this business of Captain Morgan. Morgan sailed some time ago. He's not within easy reach of Jamaica. This time of the year, he should have a steady wind behind him. But someone could go off in pursuit of him and catch him. Yes, Colonel. Uh, your ship, the one on which you are returning to England, is ready for us. No, no, she'd never catch Morgan and his fleet. She's a convict hulk, slow and clumsy. Ah, yes, that's right. There's a sloop in the harbour. She's very small, but she's fast. She's the only ship I can think of that might overtake Morgan. I'll send for the captain immediately. And you, Hunter, had better be prepared to tell the captain all you know of Morgan's plans, his destination and what he intends to do. Unless Captain Morgan changed his plans unexpectedly, Sir Thomas, I can supply you with all the information you require. As regards yourself and your companion, Hunter. Yes, sir. I have my duty to do, no matter what I think personally... I can only carry out the law as it is. I understand, sir. I must place you and this Negro under arrest. No, it will not be done in an obvious way. You'll stay here at Government House until you've spoken to the captain of the sloop and told him what you know of Morgan's plans. Hunter, I think you're a man of honour, so I won't humiliate you by placing you under guard. You and your companion shall be taken to a room and left there. I place you both on your honour that you will make no attempt to escape. Oh, oh, it is you in the flesh. It is not a dream. Yes, Father, I am home again. Oh, did you doubt that I would return? Doubt every moment since you left these shores. I have been trying to convince myself I would see you again. Oh, you are really here and unharmed. I, I, I could not believe that you had returned, that you were waiting for me here. But to a moment, who is this? This is the other. Oh, you're a servant, Don Pietro Pizarro. But for him, I would not have been successful, Father. Oh, uh, but tell me, what everything I want you to tell me that has happened on the island of Jamaica while, while you were there? Everything was a success? A greater success than I imagined. I got back the Aztec necklace. I told you I would. And Morgan, tell me of Morgan. Have you made any plans so that we can catch him? I know his plan. Captain Morgan at this moment is sailing the high seas on his way to Santa Paula. He intends to go up the river, sack the town of Santa Paula, and carry off the treasure which is there. Santa Paula? But Santa Paula is up the river. We didn't think he would ever dare do that. He is audacious enough to sail his fleet up the river. You can catch him now, Father. Let him go up the river. And then when he turns to go back, he will find the might of Spain waiting to smash him. But there is no time to waste. Already he is on his way to Santa Paula. The fleet must leave Cuba at once. Caramba, we have caught him. There is a big reward for the person who brings back such information. I do not want it. But for the act who stands beside me, we would not have been successful. Give him the reward. I want it not. I have backed the Aztec necklace. Ah, you yeah, are too generous. No, the act. I reward well those who serve me. Money shall be given to you immediately. My father will give you protection for any of your past crimes. Then, senorita, allow me to present you this for which you have been waiting. 
the Aztec necklet. Master Jeffrey, we've been kept here waiting too long. I don't like it. I fear, Hero, there's no escape for us. Oh, Lord, I wish you could show us a way to get out of this trouble. Oh, um, Hunter, I have news for you. Yes, Sir Thomas. I have verified your story with the authorities. The incidents which took place on the night the Aztec necklet was taken were, as you said. I also discovered something else of interest. The man, Glegg. Yes, Sir Thomas. The authorities told me that he was waiting in custody to be taken to the swamps. It seems he struck an overseer, and the punishment for that is the swamps. Um, I had Glegg brought to me. I told him he had a choice. He could either confess the truth about you or go to the swamps. He's confessed that you are entirely innocent. Papers clearing you will be given to you with my signature. Well, Hunter, you are a free man now. Thank you, Sir Thomas. And as for your friend Hero, although he is an escaped slave, he did valiant service in saving your life. I decided to give him a pardon and make him a free man. Oh, Lord, I thank you. And you, Hunter, are to leave immediately aboard the sloop to overtake and give warning to Henry Morgan. So Jeffrey Hunter is to overtake Captain Morgan. But Captain Morgan believes Hunter to be a thieving scoundrel. Make sure you listen to the next episode of Afloat with Henry Morgan. Mm-hmm.